Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video in creating an ID number variable in SPSS. So oftentimes as counseling researchers, we are given data sets that do not have an ID number associated with each case, as is the case over here for this fictitious data I have. You can see there's two independent variables and three dependent variables, but there is no ID number. So you have a few options here uh, to create an ID number. I prefer to collect and manipulate data in Excel, then import it into SPSS to conduct the analysis. Uh, so one thing that you could do is to, uh, like on duration here, right click, select insert variable, and then open an Excel worksheet and say we want the ID numbers to run from uh, 1001 to 10090. So we could put the first two in and autofill all the way down to 90. I happen to know there are 90 records in the SPSS file. And Control C, we'll copy. We could minimize this. And we could paste it in. And of course, we could adjust the name here uh, to ID and move the decimals down to. And there you have an ID number. Uh, that is one way to do it. Uh, it's not necessarily the easiest way if you're already uh, working with the data set in SPSS. So let me clear that. And I'll show you a way you can do it through SPSS without having to use Excel. On the top ribbon, if you go to uh, Transform, uh, Compute Variable, and I'll reset this. Let's set a target variable. It's called ID. And for numeric expression, if you go to the function group and select All, which is the first option, and then look at the first option under Functions and Special Variables, you can see it's dollar sign case num. Right, so case number. Select that. Uh, double click it. Actually, it'll put it up into the numeric expression. And then click OK. And you can see it created an ID number. Now again, I'll go into variable view and uh, change that to the correct number of decimals. So you have an ID number associated with each row now. And of course, I believe it's preferable to have the ID number uh, to the leftmost, as the leftmost variable in a data set, which is easily done. You can go to ID here and just move it up to the top. When you go back to the data view, now this gives you 1 through 90 instead of what I had before, which is 1001 through 1090. Now that's a format I tend to like as opposed to the 1 through 90. And so if you wanted to create that, and again, still staying in SPSS and not using Excel, you could transform the ID variable. And you'd reset this. Let's just call this ID 1. And the transformation would be fairly straightforward. It would be the original ID, in this case, plus. Uh, 1,000. And that's going to create uh, 1,001, 1,002, and of course again I would adjust the decimals, decimal places, so that it looks the way I would like it to. And of course you could just uh, clear this one and then move this one over and rename it. So I'll clear this variable here. And I want to show you uh, one more way to produce ID numbers. And this way is uh, for producing them when you have a blank data set. So you're starting out uh, with a blank data set and you're starting to build uh, your research project and you're getting ready to move to the data collection phase. So your data view would look like this. So you want to create your variable, and you happen to know 
let's just stay, stay with the 90 participants. So you happen to know you have 90 participants. So in this situation, uh, the method I showed you earlier, where you would go to uh, Excel and copy the 90 values for the ID number, and then place them in. So it would be Control C and then Control V to paste paste them into the first variable. Uh, this uh, I think would certainly be one of the easiest ways to set up. Uh, again, we would change the decimal places, and we could rename this participant ID. So now it's uh, set up to accept the data. You have to add more variables, of course, to accept data as your research data collection progresses. I hope you found this video on creating a participant ID number variable in SPSS to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me, and I'll be happy to assist you.